The chair now recognizes uh, the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Fry, for five minutes for his questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for having this hearing today to our panel. Thank you for being here today. You know, Washington, D.C. at this time of year is really amazing. You see uh, spring is in the air, the cherry blossoms are coming. You have people around the country and indeed around the world that come to this city to visit Washington to see what is going on. I want my constituents to see that. I want them to visit the nation's capital. I want to welcome them and, see, and let them see how democracy works. But instead of these images that they see on uh, National Geographic or wherever, they get here and they see carjackings, shootings, homicide, robberies, auto theft, arson, riots. I could go on. Uh, and you know what they read in the news? I'm going to read a few headlines here. Headline, man shot, killed in D.C., uh, Northeast D.C. marks the district's 200th homicide in 2022, police union says. Headline, D.C. averaging one carjacking a day. Council expected to lessen penalties with criminal code veto override. Headline, D.C. reaches 100th homicide mark faster than any other year since 2003. This is not a way to welcome our fellow Americans or really world travelers to our nation's capital. In my opinion, you have allowed this to happen. To me, D.C. Council is more focused on governing via bumper sticker slogans than actually focusing on the real challenges of the district. Mr. Chairman, I've witnessed today being down here on the floor as a freshman, uh, many in the crowd snicker and roll their eyes at anybody who dares question what is going on in this city. I want to put up a quick video um, to the committee staff. This is a screen recording of a member of my staff's phone who receives crime alerts from the D.C. police. This staffer lives in the Capitol Hill neighborhood. You see robbery in here. You see stabbings, shootings, robbery again. These crimes occurred in just the month of March alone in the Capitol Hill area. This is just one of the many things that people have to do around here just to stay safe. People should feel stay safe in our nation's capital, and quite frankly, they don't, as evidenced by President Biden's signing of, of legislation that originated in this House. So, Mr. Allen, let's talk about homicides in D.C. They're up 40 percent over last year. On March 6th, the D.C. police chief, uh, Robert Conti, asked what D.C. can do differently, was asked what they can do differently to get homicides down. He replied, keep violent people in jail. Well, that sounds like a pretty good idea to me. Mr. Allen, do you think that Chief Conti feels supported by D.C. City Council uh, in his efforts to crack down on crime, yes or no? I saw him last night, yes. I find it completely remarkable that that is your answer, given that you advocated for defunding the police. You also starved them based on your Twitter. You starved them of morale. You constantly demonize police in your city. It is no wonder that there is an exodus in the police department here. And we wonder causation and effect. You have D.C. police after you defunded them, and after you demonize them, you have them leave the department, and now you see inexplicably, crime go up in the Washington, D.C. According to Chief Conti, he said, right now the average homicide suspect has been arrested 11 times prior to committing a homicide. Do you think the men and women who serve the Metropolitan Police Department feel supported by D.C. Council to keep D.C. safe and to stay safe themselves? Thank you for the question. Um, I don't support defunding the police, nor did the D.C. Council defund the police. Earlier you heard about the police misconduct. Over the last 10 years, D.C. has had to pay out $91 million in police misconduct settlements. That is 10 times the amount that you're referring to from a $9 million that was redirected out to other public safety efforts from a half a billion dollar budget. That's not defunding our police. It's talking about how do we have a both-and approach to support our law enforcement. Well, with invest. respect, with respect, you're, you're Twitter says, I know not everyone agrees with where we landed. I hear you. And now that we've gone through committee to do the full council, I'm happy to keep work going. This is the biggest reduction to MPD that I've ever seen. That's defund the police. You've done that. There was a, an article no, with not, a sir. headline that talked exactly about that, that you were the chief architect. In fact, there's a Twitter handle called Recall You. And it's about your efforts to defund the police. So now you're saying, now no, you're gaslighting the American uh, people and telling them they don't matter and that they're, that they're not seeing the truth here? I was just reelected a you know, couple of months ago, Congressman. Reclaiming my time, if D.C. were a state, it would have far and away the highest per capita murder rate of any other state. In 2014 to 2020, D.C. ranked the highest with a homicide rate of 19.84 per 100,000 people. D.C. wants to be a state. They can't even be a city. 
This is your premier case of what you get when you defund the police, you don't prosecute criminals, and you turned a blind eye to crime on the streets. This is our nation's capital, and quite frankly, it is unacceptable. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.